Hey, man. Do you know if we're in a recession? Uh, I don't know. I think so. It feels like it. Yeah, I think so too. I've been acting like I've been in one this whole time. Yeah, same. I've been saving money and I've got like acid reflux. Nice, man. Same. But how do we know for sure? Someone will tell us. Oh, sweet. When do they do that? After it's been going on for a while. Like in Mean Girls. Yeah, man. It's crazy out there. So what happens when everybody gets the news? Do you think they're going to act rationally? I don't know, man. Apocalypse, probably. I gotta go, bro. Stay safe. Think of recession news as the Karen Smith of the economy. They'll let us know about it when it's already happened. There's a 30% chance that it's already raining. It's Andrew Parker, your real estate agent here in sunny Southern California, helping you with your real estate needs. If you or anyone you know is looking to buy, sell, or invest around Orange County, feel free to give me a call. I'd be happy to help you out. All right, recession data is a lagging indicator in the sense that it's all based on the past two quarters showing negative GDP growth. Even though the news comes late, do not underestimate the emotional reaction that the markets will show once the news is confirmed. Today, we're going to be talking about what the U.S. real estate market has been up to and some key dates that you should prepare for. All right, let's start things off with an overview of the entire market for the largest market Monday we've ever done covering the United States of America. How exciting is this? Right now, we are at $428,000 for a median sales price, up 11% year over year. We have come down just a little bit from May into June, about $2,000. So That's a small decrease here in Orange County. We've actually been seeing decreases for the past two months. May and June have come down about a total of 6% combined. Now, the number of homes sold is up to 615,000 homes across the nation. That shows you at a 16.5% decrease year over year that our demand is much less than what we saw last year. So all of you buyers out there, you are have much less competition out there, which is super great. Now, on top of that, our national average for the 30-year fixed rate mortgage is up to 5.5%, but two notes. One, this is only taking into account one number per month. There are some swings that happen throughout the month where the number for your rate for a 30-year fixed could go below 5.5, could go above. So it's super important to talk to a lender to find out where those stand in the moment that you're ready to purchase. And on top of that, we are also expecting potential change coming in the market. So let's dive into our key dates to be prepared for. Okay, some key dates to watch out for this week. We've got the 26th and the 27th of July where the Federal Reserve will have their next meeting. We're expecting some rate hikes anywhere between 75 to 100 basis points in their hopes to combat inflation. Now this will likely cause a short-term spike in mortgage rates, but that does not necessarily mean that those rate hikes will be sustained for a while. Also on the 26th, we will receive the Q2 median home price from the Federal Reserve Economic Data Sites. So that'll be interesting to look out for what we're seeing on the median price point across the country. Now on July 28th, we are expecting to see the big one, the GDP projections for Q2 from the Bureau of Economic Analysis, which should give us a good estimate of whether we have been in a recession or not. Now be prepared for news channels to pick up this info, throw it in a lot of their headlines, causing a bit more of an emotional response in the markets. Remember, this is built on past info, but those that haven't been preparing for this news might panic momentarily if it notes that we were in a recession. And the final key day actually happens today because we just got news that you finally hit the subscribe button and <laughs> we couldn't be more proud of you, honey. All right, this is fun to look at. Let's find out what the 10 metros with the fastest growing sales prices are across the nation. It's basically all of Florida. I guess everybody's trying to get over there to get rid of the income tax. The only non-Florida city is actually Detroit, Michigan. Good to see those prices going up to 32.4% year over year, but the winner is Boynton Beach, Florida. Couldn't tell you where that is, but 42.4% over there. That is incredible. It's pretty wild to see the mass exodus, I guess, heading over to Florida to go purchase all those homes. All right, let's talk about our supply. We are at 1.66 million homes listed for sale in June of 2022. That's 2.5% over what we saw in June of 2021. Now, this is also basically over every other month in 2021. So we're kind of seeing the highest inventory we've seen for almost an entire year. Just July and August beat us last year in 2021. The number of newly listed homes is also going up. We are up to 789,000 homes across the nation that's been going up ever since uh, December, it looks like, and pretty steep increases that still, though, is down 3.5% year over year. The median days on market is pretty incredible how low it stayed across the country. Right now in Orange County, we're expecting to see that start popping up because of the fact that homes are taking longer to sell, unfortunately, because a lot of them are overpriced. Um, but you can see just how low comparative to history we are right now. We're still at 18 days 
for the median days on market across the country. That is up three days year over year. And then our month supply of inventory is still very much in a seller's market for the country. We are down in two months supply of inventory. Remember a stable market or a balanced market would be seen around five to six months. Anything below is a seller's market. Anything above that is a buyer's market. So this just kind of tells you where the negotiation power leverage stays in either the buyer side or the seller side. Right now it's very much still in the seller side. All right, what about our housing demand? Well, 55.4% of homes have sold above the listed price which is incredible to me we are seeing that come down just a little bit in june and my prediction would be that it will continue to come down for a bit just because of the headwinds we see in this market not many buyers are out there so and a lot of buyers are overpricing their home which we'll get to in a second if you price your home well you can get about 2.3 percent over your listed price on average which is still great especially considering that is a number for the entire country that is wild to see that it's above 100%. Now on the homes with price drops though, this is if you don't price it well, sellers, 17.6% of homes across the nation are experiencing price drops. And you can see just how much that has skyrocketed over the past like four months or so. You don't wanna be one of these homes because it takes longer for your home to sell and then you're gonna have a price drop and buyers are gonna get a little annoyed with it. They might not be as interested as before because they might've had to purchase a different home in the meantime. It is so important to put your home at the right price right when you start with this market. Honestly, I would err on the side of lower than fair market value because of the fact that prices are coming down a little bit, especially in our area here in Orange County. If you price your home above a falling market, it's going to take way too long for it to sell. If you price it below, you might be able to get the last little bits of the bidding wars that we're seeing up to 102.3% over list price. Now the top 10 most competitive cities, three of which are in Colorado and three are in Washington. So congrats to those states. It's very difficult to live there. <laughs> it's very hard to find a new home in those areas. People love the mountains right now. People are wanting to spend wonderful summers up in the mountains where they can go mountain biking and river rafting, just having a great time. And then obviously the winters, you get skiing and amazing landscapes covered in snow, which we never see here in Orange County. Let's talk about consumer sentiment. Fannie Mae's home purchase sentiment index in June showed that 81% of consumers believe that our economy is headed in the wrong direction, with only 20% of respondents thinking it's a good time to buy a home, which just shows you how many buyers are concerned about the short-term market. Refer to Warren Buffett. Be greedy when others are fearful. There are many reasons why right now is actually a great time to purchase a home as long as you fit certain categories. I have a full breakdown video of those categories and strategies that you can use. You can watch that. I'll link it down in the description or somewhere up here. Now, my biggest concern with this survey is that 21% of respondents are concerned about their job and income stability, which is the highest that has been in the past 18 months. This is where recessions can do a lot of damage when people start to lose their incomes. We have already seen a lot of layoffs in the tech space, and those might spread into other industries now because most employees have absolutely no control over being laid off or not, it would be my suggestion to start building that rainy day fund if you haven't already and maybe start to explore some job postings online just in case you hear some unfortunate news. It'd be much better to plan and never need it than act like it couldn't happen to you and have no backup plan. Finally, Fannie Mae is predicting a slowing housing market, which we've actually already been seeing, and this is a great moment for those who need a home to get in one before the competition re-enters the marketplace. Okay, so in conclusion for our buyers and sellers, buyers, demand has dropped about 16.5% from last year, meaning you have much less competition on the market. There are also more homes for sale in June than almost every month of 2021, and 17% of homes are currently experiencing price drops. All of that plays hugely into your favor. Sellers, you can still sell your home in about 18 days. You're just barely off peak prices. And if you price your home well, you can still sell for over your listed price. Remember, a lot of people have built their wealth by planning for recessionary times. So whatever the news brings, there is still opportunity out there. Just be sure to err on the side of spending less money, saving more, and maintaining your job so that you can take advantage of the market volatility. That's been Market Monday. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. It helps me out a ton. Also, be sure to hit the Calendly link down in the description below where we can set up a call or a meeting to discuss your real estate goals and how you plan to take advantage of this changing market. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.